and I always tell people when it comes around to Veterans Day, it shouldn't be November 11th. It should be every day, every year, all the time. I grew up in Kansas, uh, age 17, had never seen the ocean, never ridden an airplane. Yep. I went to the Naval Academy, went through flight training, flew uh, jet fighters in Vietnam, uh, 74 successful combat missions, shot down on my 75th, with five days from the end of my tour of duty. Ooh. Spent the next 2,103 days in prison camps in North Vietnam. When, we th when I think about Veterans Day, I think about what they give, you know, and I know you've, you've, you've given a lot but you've also, you have forgiven. And part of my survival, I think, was what my mother taught me about forgiving yeah. in, uh, early in life. And it turned out to be a great Christian principle, of course, but it's also a survival principle. I remember those first several months in that little eight foot by eight foot prison cell that I was in, I was feeling sorry for myself and blaming everybody else and had all of this hate built up in, against the enemy. And so in, in our communication, we would pass around Bible verses and patriotic quotes and, and poetry of all types. And this one guy passed me this, this quote, and, um, and it meant a lot to me. And the quote was this, acid does more harm on the vessel it's stored than on the subject it's poured. If I keep all this bitterness within me, all this vitriol within me, I'm not hurting the enemy. You know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a very good soldier if I'm, I'm killing myself. Yeah. And so from that day forward, you know, I kept thinking about mom and the Bible verses she taught me about forgiveness and, and it really works. You know, it's a, it's a great liberating feeling, you know, when you can f forgive not just the people that harmed you, but forgive yourself. Yeah. I'm sure it's, it's difficult for anybody to understand how you can forgive such a, such a tragedy, you know, such a, such a pain. And so I'm pacing along in this cell and I uh, heard a cricket in the far corner of my prison cell. And I thought, uh, I'd been a farm kid, knew what a cricket sounded like. But the longer I listened, the more rhythmic the chirp became and I walked over to check it out. And it wasn't a cricket, it was a little piece of wire. If it's another American, it also has to be a fighter pilot. Since that's who's in these prison camps, I'm thinking, boy, would I like to talk to another fighter pilot. Went over, reached down and I tugged on this wire and it tugged back. And I tugged again and the wire disappeared right back through that rat hole. Well, that wire came back about, about an hour later. And this time it had a note wrapped around the end of it. And the note was written on a dirty piece of toilet paper, just blobs, yeah. and it said, memorize this code, then, eat this note. I memorized the code, I ate the note, and I started tugging on the wire in certain numbers that would represent various letters of the alphabet, uh, and started to communicate with this guy. <laughs> and he, his first words, how you doing, buddy? I said, I'm doing terrible, buddy. <laughs> I said, my president sent me over here, it's his dirty Vietnam War, not mine. Giving him all these excuses, okay, as, as, why, as why I should feel the way I feel. <laughs> and he, he said, uh, you want to know your biggest problem? I said, you mean I have problems bigger than the ones I can see? <laughs> he said, you're suffering from a fairly common prison disease. He said, we don't know for sure. Around here we call it prison thinking. I said, prison thinking? He said, Roger, you think you're a prisoner. <laughs> I stepped back from that corner and a little self-analysis. I'm down to 120 pounds. I'm bleeding from four open wounds, so I got boils all over my body. I'm rotting away in a communist prison camp, and now, to add insult to injury, they put me next to a positive thinker. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept tugging. It was the only ball game in town. Yeah. This guy, Bob Shoemaker, still one of my best friends, taught me a lot. He said, man, he said, when a fighter pot of this first shot down, bone out of the sky, he said, What's the first emotion? You start to blame everybody else for your problems. You start feeling sorry for yourself. You think that you have only no control of your destiny. He said, man, you still have total control of your destiny. It's not what's around you that makes a difference. It's your decisions about what's around you. Adversity is a horrible thing to waste. He said, within every challenge in life, there's some kind of an opportunity there. 
And then I thought back to the Bible verse, Romans 8, 28. I thought, you know, all, all things work together for yeah. good to those who love the Lord. Yep. Let's see if this Bible verse really works. <laughs> <laughs> That's a test of faith. It is a test of faith. <laughs> and, it, and the good news is it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Charlie, I know you went through a lot. What were the hardest days, the hardest times, Charlie? Well, the torture was probably the hardest physical stuff that I did. They fold your body up into a human pretzel. Then they run a rope from your shackles and your ankles over your shoulder and down to your wrists and then they put a stick of bamboo in there and they start tightening this rope the end result is your feet are right up in your face I remember looking back over my head and seeing my wrists backwards my shoulders of course were out of joint by this time and I'm just all folded up like this human pretzel I kept wishing uh, that I would pass out but you, you can't pass out you just sit there and hurt when you got close to knowing you were coming home, I mean, when did you really find out that, hey, I'm gonna get out of here? Kind of figure we're going home and say, they brought in a, a piece of toilet paper and they put it on the floor and said, put your bare foot on here. And they, they put, took a pencil and they, they drew around the toilet paper. They're gonna make some shoes, you know? And we hadn't seen a pair of shoes in six years. Yeah. Then they allowed us outside uh, some of the time to get some color. When you, when you got back to the States, um, I know there was probably a lot of things that were going through your mind. And so the first guy that I met at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines, uh, when, when I flew out of there, was a psychiatrist. And, and, and he told me that my wife had filed for divorce just three months before I came home. And he said, uh, how do you feel about that? I said, well, I'm, I'm sad, you know, I'm disappointed, but hey man, I'm free. I got a lot of things going on here. He said, well, he said, now, from what you've been through, and now you know this, uh, that your wife has divorced you, you really need to get angry. You really need to get bitter. He said, you have the right to be bitter. I said, Doc, I have the right to have diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> but I choose not to be bitter. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I started living my life and married a wonderful gal, and we have four kids and four grandkids, and I live the life of, life of Riley. When you, when you hear the word veteran, Charlie, What's it mean to you? I'm glad you asked that because this whole program is not about me or even you. Yeah. It's about these uh, guys and gals that have served their country. Yeah. Sometimes I think when these guys um, wonder if they were really in the right place at the right time yeah. serving their country. But I guarantee that anybody that took that oath, you know, they uh, served their country and they, um, they deserve to, to, to be thanked. Yeah. And I just want to pass along that thanks. To, to all your veterans yep. in the crowd because yep. they deserve it more than I do. So. Uh, I tell people, we, we owe people like you and all the veterans and servicemen and women so much. Uh, freedom come at a cost. It you is. Know? We get so many emails and stuff from servicemen and women that have been through a lot and they say, I, I can't keep going. I want to give up, you know, and and I know you've probably got a better answer for them than I do because I tell them, I say, don't give up. I'm counting on you, yeah. you know. They got, they got to keep hope and got to keep faith. And in my personal life, I prayed a lot. Yeah. And I really believe that there was some kind of master plan. I may never know what it is, but there's a plan for the challenge that I am facing now. If you look at the challenge of your life and think there's an opportunity in there somewhere, yeah. there's a purpose, there's a reason why I'm going through this. and and then. And, in, and and find that purpose. You know, we got about 22 veterans a day kill themselves. We got a terrible suicide rate with, in our veteran yeah. community. Uh, they take off the uniform and they don't have a purpose. And you're in civilian life and you just, you don't have that direction. You don't have that focus. You don't have that reason to live. If you can find yourself a purpose, and it doesn't have to be a wild purpose, you know, te teaching Sunday school, yeah. you know. Uh, and go, go, you know, coach a little league team uh, and, and, and keep the faith. Yeah. And not just faith in God, but faith in yourself. Because we're in, we're in the image of God. Yeah. Well, I want them to have faith, too, in, in their fellow man, the Absolutely. one beside them, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'd be alive today if it hadn't been for the community of prisoners of war that I was with over yeah. there. Well, my friend, I've had a lot of visitors in camp, two-legged, four-legged, some that crawled on their belly, but uh, you're a blessing, my friend. You are. I thank you so much. Uh, 
And I hope for you viewers out there too that uh, you know you, you have to keep faith, you have to keep hope. Uh, you know, we, we honor these folks on Veterans Day, but don't let it be just November 11th. Let it be 365 days a year. And let's thank these people that are beside us. And But we want to just tell y'all, God bless you, each and every one. We appreciate you so much. And Charlie, thank you, brother. I tip my hat to you, my friend. I tip my hat to you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.